The topic of my uh, presentation today is the secret to understanding the gold and silver markets. And I just hope I do a little sharper job than I did at the Heathrow Airport getting here. I needed some money to get the cab to get from the, uh, you know, to get from the airport to the, the Marriott Hotel where we're staying. So I pulled out a $100 bill and I gave it to the exchange people and I said, could, I, could you please give me in dollar or the equivalent to, uh, of $100 worth of Deutschmarks? They looked at me cross-eyed, Deutschmarks? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work here as money anymore. I meant euros. <laughs> So the point is, I, I said, oh my gosh, my, where is my head on that one? I, you know, I, just, I was just thinking about Munich. It was also interesting to me that I thought, well, $100 was going to get me here um, you know, easily for a cab ride. Well, they only gave me, I haven't been here in a while, and they gave me 51 euros. Well, I said, well, that'll be enough. You know, same, and I got there, the, the, the cab ride was 53 bucks. I had to give the guy a $10 tip. I had to go in and beg the people at the front desk to bail me out. It just shook me up, because you, you're used to it. The, what the costs they're doing. I mean, even at the hotel, I get into the presentation, like the hamburger for us is like $35. It's like, oh my gosh, talk about hyperinflation. So we're getting there. But anyway, it's great to be back in Munich. The last time I was here, the price of gold was $624. And uh, obviously, a lot has happened then, since then. And uh, of course, the biggest thing is the, what the prices of, of gold and silver, uh, what they've done. I thought I'd start off by just explaining a little bit about GATA. Uh, it was formed by Chris Powell, an editor, editor of a daily newspaper, the Journal Enquirer in Manchester, Connecticut, in January of 1999 to expose the manipulation of the gold price, stopping the price from going above 290 bucks, 300 bucks. And then I heard other reports, and I said, this thing is rigged. It's being managed. And I got all ticked off and wrote a piece called Scandal Gold. And, Chris, who was a, had newspaper experience, said, well, geez, if what you're talking about is correct, it's a violation of antitrust policies. Let's do something about it. He said, if you put up 500 bucks, I'll put up 500 bucks. And somehow I got in, as James said, on CNBC for the first and last time in 12 years, because once they heard what I had to say, it became persona non grata, not only on CNBC, but uh, the rest of uh, in, in the US media. And then as the time went on, we realized it was really much bigger, this whole scheme, than we thought. It, not only was it some of the bullion banks, but it included the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, the Exchange Stabilization Fund, and other central banks, such as uh, the Bank of England. And, and that's where we came up with the name, the Gold Cartel. Now, there's a lot of evidence to prove the manipulation of the gold market. But if I might say, think of it as a murder trial, where you know somebody killed somebody. And, but the jury has to go through months of evidence and putting it all together and explaining it. And by the end, it's clear that the person murdered somebody. Uh, but it takes a, a great deal of, uh, of time to do that. But the evidence, I said, is so blatant that that's what occurred. Well, we don't have two months to do that. So um, all I can say is, for those of you who would like more details, my colleague Chris Powell, who spoke at Olympia, Olympia Park in November, has a piece at the GATA website, www.gata.org. Gold price suppression is public record and public policy, not conspiracy theory. So for those of you who want more detailed specifics, you can go and read what Chris had to say. But as, since I'm in Europe, I thought I would bring uh, to your attention one of the events that really drew people to GATA, because while James uh, realized we had something that was on target right away, many other people that are now with GATA looked at us with skeptical eyes until the Bank of England decided to sell half their gold, or 400 tons, uh, in May of 1999. And they did so in advance, telling everybody what they were going to do. And if you want to maximize your money in selling something, you don't tell people in advance what you're going to do, and, and, and then I think also take the lowest price. It was ridiculous. As James liked to say, can you imagine Warren Buffett going out and saying, I'm going to buy XYZ stock and tell everybody in the world ahead of time? I thought. Uh, James was, uh, you know, your, your memory get old as, get as old as I get, your memory gets a little bit goofy. And I thought that's what brought James into care. I forgot about that he knew all about us at the, uh, uh, f from my appearance on CNBC. But he has been one of our staunchest supporters uh, all these years, uh, and a man who's, who gave uh, God a credibility when it's hard to come by. Uh, and there also has been nobody more right uh, over these past years than what the prices of gold and silver to do than James. So how about a big hand for him? Now I could go on and on about a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to get right to the point of this presentation and that 
the key to really understanding what the prices of gold and silver have done and are going to do is to know what God knows. And that is to understand the ramifications of the gold price suppression scheme. The people that don't go there, quite frankly, don't know anything about the real gold market. And I'll get into this. Uh, it doesn't mean they, don't, they know a lot of things, but the real key to understand what's happened and why, and why we have nailed this market as well as anybody in the whole world for the past decade, and many of them have been totally offside, uh, is worth getting into. And since I know many of you are here today looking to, for money-making opportunities, what I'm going to do is try to go back over time and get into some of the stuff that we said. So to build the confidence of what we said during, as we went along, geez, and if these guys have been that right, and here's some specific examples from here to now, it may give you more confidence about what we have to say for our predictions of what's coming in the future. And for us, it's all about being comfortable about understanding the gold and silver price suppression scheme. And this thing, ironically enough, we mentioned Frank Veneroso a couple times. It started with me before my website was started or got us started with this book, the 1998 Gold Annual Gold Book that Frank Veneroso wrote. In it, he said, and just I'll read one par paragraph, in chapter three we discovered two absolutely crucial facts about the gold market. First, outstanding gold loans at perhaps 8,000 tons far exceed conservative consensus estimates. And second, the evidence builds that global gold demand and the deficit in the gold market is perhaps 600 tons higher than Goldfields Mineral Services, the industry organization that's uh, looked, looked, uh, looked at, estimates. The bottom line is way back then, Frank realized that the gold loans were much bigger than the establishment was willing to acknowledge. And what this meant, the demand was much greater than was being recognized by uh, industry organizations. So all Gata did once we got into this, our routine, is to take what Frank did and extrapolate it on the years to come uh, as they've gone by. And the irony is, is, as many facts that we come up with, we can't get people in the, in the mainstream world, I call it, or the mainstream gold world, what I call Planet Wall Street, uh, to pay any attention to us. And there's a reason for that. We are taking on the richest and most powerful people in the world. The big banks, the big politicians, the big money, and the financial media and other people don't want to hear about it. If you look at our track record, we have done things in the most mainstream of ways. Uh, start I met with James Saxon, a United States Congress, the head of the Joint Economic Committee. Met with the Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert. Met with Alabama, Alabama Congressman Spencer Bacchus, who's now ahead of the uh, Congressional Financial Service Committee, a very powerful committee. I went to see President Bush's best boyhood friend, who's a top politician in, in Austin, Texas. Gave me his private fax, we sent him a fax. Lawrence Lindsay, his economic advisor, got back to us, said he couldn't comment on other things because of a lawsuit. We've, had, we've written all kinds of people in the most appropriate of ways. As James mentioned, we had those three international conferences and we have uh, another conference coming in London, the belly of the beast, the belly of the gold cartel beast. There's these invitations on this table here for any of you that might want to think about attending and get more information from the God of Sight. And as mentioned earlier, we placed this $264,000 full page color ad. Now you would think, I mean, this is pretty establishing. You know, it's been a lot of money. And it changed eventually in this ad, we talked about coming catastrophe and disaster as a result of the price suppression scheme, which was ahead of, months ahead of the financial market collapse. We talked about three to $5,000 gold. Now you would think at the time, we thought, geez, someone's gonna say, why would you people spend all this money? Or as time goes by, this is exactly what happened. You think even today that anybody would give us any, we care about credit, but understanding of, geez, these guys were right. What did, what did they know uh, that other people didn't know? But to our astonishment, nothing. That's why it's such a pleasure to come here and have such a receptive audience, because in the United States, you've got to have give tickets away <laughs> to have people come see us. But uh, hopefully after this conference in London, which is going to be a big, big deal, some of you heard of Jim Sinclair, he never speaks anyway, he's going to be there. Uh, it's going to be quite exciting. And At that conference we're going to celebrate uh, what happened at Gold Rush 21. Uh, and many of the speakers are going to be of the same and we've got some uh, big new names to be there.